Get access to exclusive tutorials and take your paracord weaving to the next level by supporting this channel on Patreon. Hey, what's going on guys? Tim here again. In today's video, we're learning how to make a paracord cell phone holster that you can loop onto your belt. This idea was inspired by East Coast Cord, so go check them out. And uh, that's what we're doing in today's tutorial. Hope you guys will enjoy it. Let's get into the tutorial. So to start out, we're gonna get the paracord that we are using for the sides of the paracord belt holster. So you can check the measurements in the video there as well as in the description. So just make sure you clip off both ends of the paracord and yank out all those inner guts. You could do this without the paracord gutted, but uh, it will look quite different and will definitely make the holster a lot bulkier. So of course do this for both sets of the gray strands as well as the navy strands. You'll also have to do this for the uh, belt loop strands, but you can do that later if you want. And also make sure you melt the ends of those uh, gutted pieces you just did so they don't fray. Next, we're going to flatten our cord. I'm going to soak my paracord in just a bit of water just to get it uh, wet. And that will help the cord flatten as, and also it will help it from potentially burning or melting uh, when you are flattening the cord. And as always, I'm gonna use a hair straightener to flatten out the cord. Uh, make sure you keep the cord moving and don't set the a hair straightener too high because you don't want to melt the cord. Even melting it slightly can cause it to become a little bit shiny and you may not want that. Uh, you could also use an iron on an ironing board and just, you know, flatten the cord that way. Uh, either way works, but again, just be careful. Don't make the iron or don't make the iron too hot because you don't want to melt the paracord. Next, I made a cardboard template of my cell phone and I'm just measuring the peri perimeter of that phone minus the top part because the phone will be sli slipping into the case from the top. And to, for my phone, it's about 15 and a half inches. All right, so now with my ungutted piece of paracord, the longest piece in the measurements, I've got the length there, and this is gonna form that border of the uh, cell phone holster, all right? So I've got my length set, and you may have to play around this with a couple times, but um, we're gonna start tying some Cobra knots. So take the right cord over that core, and take the left behind and through the loop on the right. So this is just starting out our um, Cobra knot kind of border that's uh, gonna be part of the holster. So take that cord through the loop on the right, and pull everything shut. And from here, you're just going to continue tying those Cobra knots over your core. All right. And uh, after I tie the second Cobra knot, I'm gonna pull down on those core strands a little bit. And at this point, you wanna double check your measurement. Make sure you haven't gone too long or too short because uh, sometimes that measurement can change a little when you make the, um, the first few loops. So yeah, continue tying Cobra knots and go from the top all the way to the bottom. Now coming down to the end here, you see there's going to be uh, this loop that we're coming down to. I'm just gonna tie all the way to the very end over that last little bit of loop. So get the last Cobra knot on top of that and pull it tight. I'm actually going to snip off my excess here because it will make it easier for the process of uh, making the holster. So clip off that excess paracord and I'm going to press down on it with my knotter's tool. Now I'm gonna start forming my Cobra knot uh, piece around my template like so. And I'm just gonna use a, a clip here to hold it onto the cardboard. And uh, I forgot to mention earlier, I do have about three pieces of cardboard in there, but um, it's up to you how many you wanna use. I think three is about the average thickness of a phone with the case on that is. So now I've got my uh, longer gutted piece of gray paracord. 
right? The one that we ironed earlier, I've got it on a fid. Now we're gonna start attaching it to the Cobra knot piece. Starting up at the very top on the, I guess you can call it the right side. I'm gonna work that fid through that top loop and you're gonna pull it all the way through. And uh, I'm just gonna tie a little simple overhand knot at the very end, just so that it doesn't slip out. So we've got that first through the first loop. Now we're gonna go across to the other side. That's where we snipped and melted our cord. I'm just gonna go above the, um, the very top cobra knot there. So get it through that little loop right there. And if you've melted your cord properly, you don't have to worry about it coming undone. Now pull the cord all the way through again. And the cord is going to twist a lot in this project. And that's probably the most annoying part. So you'll have to untwist it and get it to lay nice and flat like so. So now that we've got that first uh, piece through, we're going to go down to the next knot. So you want to aim for that vertical kind of knot right there and just go from the outside in and get the cord through once again. And again, pull all that cord all the way through. And again, you want the cord to lay nice and flat. So as you can see, I've untwisted everything and that's how your cord should lay. See, again, it wants to, it wants to twist. So keep everything nice and flat to keep it looking good. and pull that shut and now we're coming back across to the other side so again you're going through those sort of vertical sections of the cobra knots so this time going from the outs, uh, inside to the out like so and pull all that cord through and again make sure it lays nice and flat you'll have to do a lot of untwisting in this project so as you can see, we're going to do this sort of back and forth going all the way down one side of the case or the holder, the holster. And you're just going to repeat that process of going back and forth, weaving that flattened cord uh, down through the holster, through those Cobra knots. So we've come down to the bottom here and you're just going to go as far as you can until there are uh, no more knots. So this is the, the kind of last, um, I guess you can call it vertical knot on the one side there. I'm going to bring it to the other side and it's going to end off on that side right there. Okay. So we've done this to one side. Now we're just going to repeat the exact same process on the other side. Okay, I'm gonna do the exact same thing and work my second piece of gutted gray cord all the way down from uh, the top to the bottom doing the very same thing. So now we've come down to the bottom on the second side. And again, I'm just gonna go as much as I can. And I've taken that clip off because I need to get the cord over that side there. And luckily I've ended up on the same side um, as my first cord on the other side. And hopefully that happens for you. You know, these things aren't always 100%. Uh, so I've got them both on the other side and I just tied a simple overhand knot to keep them in place. Now, uh, moving on to the blue cord, we're gonna do the same thing, but now we're going uh, sort of vertically and perpendicular to those uh, first set of cords that we did. So I started at the very bottom there, as you can see, same thing, I tied an overhand knot and that vertical knot is just kind of holding it there. So now at this point, we're gonna start weaving our navy cord over and under through that gray cord. It's just gonna be the simple over under kind of basket weave type um, pattern 
and you're gonna go from the bottom all the way to the top. Now I'm using this kind of double fid method to work the chords, or sorry, work the fid through. I've got a longer fid as well, and that will definitely help. If you don't wanna do all the chords at once like I did, you could just go you know, over, under, over, under, uh, single or double chords, whatever you want. Now again, I'm pulling all the chord to the other side and make sure you untwist any chord. Now we're gonna go back the way we came and you're gonna do the opposite, okay? So again, over, under, but opposite of that first strand that you did. So again, breaking out that second fid and I'm gonna work one way from the top this time back to the bottom. So get all that chord through and pay attention to how the chord sits at the top. I've made sure it's untwisted and it just kind of has a slight bend to it. But again, it lays flat. I'm just gonna push everything down again and that's how your chords should lay. So now we've come back down to the bottom and now I'm actually gonna go through that little knot in between right there, as you can see. It's between two cobra knots on the back side. All right, so we've gone through that one. And now we're gonna go back up, but before we do that, we have to go through one of those vertical cobra knots, like so. All right, that's gonna anchor the cord back on this side, and I think it'll make it look really good. So again, get all that excess out to one side, and again, untwist everything, and make sure when that cord comes through, it's laying nice and flat on the bottom, like so. Now we're gonna go back up the way we came, all right? So that is the process of adding the navy color and um, adding this side to the holster. And you're just going to repeat that process all the way through. So again, there's gonna be a lot of twisted cords. You'll have to untwist those as you go along. And again, you're just going to repeat this process going, um, I guess, across your holster. The process may get a bit more difficult towards the other side because uh, the cord will start to get a lot tighter. Um, so again, I find using the sort of double fit method a lot easier. Now we've con come down to the very end of the other side. And at this point, I'm just going to start going under the uh, over and under the cords uh, singularly because it's a little bit too difficult to get the whole fit under there uh, at once. So I'm going to again continue that process all the way down to the bottom. Now I'm coming out that very corner there. See in between those two cobra knots at the very corner. I'm gonna pull that cord through. Now you'll notice I still have a bit of a gap on, on the very side there, and I do need to cover that up. So I need to go back up one more time. And I didn't go through one of the side vertical knots this time, I just had the cord go back up from where it was. At this point, the cord will be uh, kind of very tight to get underneath those uh, weaves. So again, I just did them uh, one at a time. So I have made my way back up to the top. And now to terminate this strand, all we're going to do is loop it back under that first strand. And I apologize for being a little bit out of frame here, but see just back under that first strand, bring it back down because you don't want it, the cord you know, ending coming out and up. And I'm just going to tuck it underneath um, just one of the knots up top there, right next to where we sort of melted off that uh, those term terminal cords for the Cobra Knots. I was struggling a bit, so again, I apologize for being out of frame. Pull that all the way through, and there we go. You've got one side done. 
So of course we can just snip and melt that cord there. And now that we've done the first part, uh, you can start doing the second part, the other side, the exact same way. You know, that's what kind of always sucks about having to do something twice. Uh, because after you do it the first time, you're only half done. But anyways, uh, yeah, continue that process. Do the exact same thing on the other side and get that other side uh, kind of all woven and stitched up. Now I did come to a bit of an issue here, um, just the way the cords lined up, everything you know didn't line up too perfectly. So again, I finished down at the bottom here, but I do have still a bit of a gap on the side. So once again, I need to go back up um, to cover that little gap. And I don't even have really an area to uh, bring the cord back up on. I need to anchor on the bottom. So I just ended up anchoring it on this cobra knot here where my other gutted cords came out, like so. So it's coming out right there. And now I'm just gonna go back up, uh, back up top to cover that last little gap. So as you can see, I'm just gonna anchor it back through right there. Pull all the cord through. And I'm just going to go back up to uh, the top. So guys, there's no hard and fast rules for these um, projects. You know, just do whatever works. Um, some of these things I just kind of did on the fly. And, you know, overall, I think it turned out uh, quite well. So now back up to the top. We've got everything covered. Again, I'm just gonna go back down to bring that cord uh, back down through the top to the bottom. And again, I'm just gonna anchor it on the side there through one of the Cobra knots. I'm just gonna go through right there. Push that all the way through. And there we have it. The hard part is kind of done so now I'm just gonna clip off all the excess cords uh, snip and melt all those gutted flattened cords and clean up everything So with all that out of the way, we can now add our belt loops. And I did remove the cardboard there for a sec, but um, definitely keep it in to put the belt loops in. Now this part, I just kind of eyeballed it, but as you can see, I went under three uh, gutted strands there of the Navy. And this is with my three foot section of the gutted cord. And I was just kind of laying my belt on top just to get an idea of how uh, kind of long I want these belt loops to be. And after just sort of eyeballing it there, I took the strand on the left and I'm going to loop that through from the uh, left side to the right. So as you can see, we've got the midpoint anchored on the bottom, uh, the cord on the left brought up to the top bring it over from the left to the right under under three strands and do the same with the strand on the right side. So again, now this gutted cord, that's the one, one coming out the right side, that one there. And you're just gonna bring it back up to the top, go under those same three gutted cords and pull it through like so. So now you have both working ends coming out the top 
So again, you're just gonna tie some Cobra knots to um, work your way from the top of the belt loop all the way down to the bottom. This one might be a little bit more difficult because you've got less working space behind, but it's not too bad. And continue tying those Cobra knots all the way to the very bottom. And you can always double check the uh, fit on your belt at this point. If you're not, if you don't like it, you can uh, restart. But uh, if you're good with it, just snip off those excess cords and melt them with the lighter. Press down on with the knotter's tool. So again, we've done one side. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. I think um, having two belt loops is definitely a necessity. It just makes it a bit more stable on your pocket, or sorry, on your belt, and kind of prevents it from kind of being too kind of sort of wobbly on your belt. But I just did the exact same thing, and I tried to keep it as symmetrical as possible um, so that you know the two belt loops look like they're um, yeah, and this have the same spacing on the holster. So again, I just did the, did the exact same process. Cobra knots all the way down and now snip off the excess cords. All right, and there we have it. There is our paracord cell phone holster. Um, yeah, I know it's a bit of a tall order on this one, but I think it makes a really, really cool project. And, um, you know, if you've got the time, you've got the cord, and you want to try out a paracord cell phone holster, definitely try this one out. Um, you could always just do it without the belt loops, and it will just be kind of like a slip case for your phone. That way it won't get, you know, phone your phone won't get scratched or anything if you throw it in a backpack or whatnot. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this project. I hope you'll try it out. A huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Uh, guys, if you don't know, I do run a Patreon page to help support this channel. If you want access to exclusive tutorials, feel free to check out the links to my Patreon page in the video as well as down below. And don't forget, all the paracord and tools I use in this video you can find uh, through my you know, Amazon store. Link in the description box down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.